So in this video we talk about uh, the D-norm, the German regulatory framework for uh, bordering walls and it's the German version but it's EU-wide the same. So there are four major things. First, it's your friend, the norm. Um, it gives you security that you don't have a major design mistake in your design. Uh, second, it, it doesn't relieve you of common sense so you still have to think about it because it's a theoretical paper and you have to work in the real practical work so you will have challenges that are not defined in the norm and fourth it's not a design briefing so you have to have your own design briefing um, it just gives you a framework like the corridor in which you can design but it doesn't tell you if you design for beginners or for pros so you have to have your own design briefing and the fourth is um, all regulations are behind the development um, so if you develop something new it will not be in the denorm but you still can build it so everything that is newly designed or invented is not regulated usually. The regulation comes afterwards. So don't be afraid to do something new. Even if it's not in the norm, just make it safe. And maybe you are the guy who brings it to be regulated and, and be a norm. So what we discuss today is not the whole norm because it also um, explains how to test your walls for um, durability. Um, we are not going into this. It's more a production a theme we are going into more your design stuff and that's basically height and your falling protection. So the fair first major point is maximum height of your boulder wall and there are actually two maximum heights. So the one first is if you cannot top out it's 4 meter 50 and if you can top out like on a boulder block it's only 4 meters. So that's two maximum heights you have that's your corridor you cannot go above it. Important to know is it's not a design briefing so many people just always do 450. It costs a lot of money to do your last half meter. It's the most dangerous part for sure, especially for beginners. And there are many walls that are only like 3 meter, 350, that are super successful. It's really nice to border on. A good root setter can do nice roots on it. So really think about it. It's just the corridor. It's your maximum. It's not your design briefing. The second major regulation is the mattress area. So basically your safety zone. Um, it's defined by the height of the wall. So if your wall is lower than three meter of height, you need two meters or more of mattress area. And if you have more than three meter, a max of 450, then you have to have at least 250. So if this is your mattress, normally you will always want to have 250. And this is your max of four. 50 if you cannot top out, if you have a ceiling here or you cannot just top out. Uh, important to know is how do you measure it. Um, if you have an overhang and you have the mattress, you always go from the protect projection from the top. So obviously here is where you start your at least 250. This is your wall. That's a mattress. Same goes when you do a slab. You don't start now at the top, you start here. And that's your 250. So we talked about the falling distance um, in the D-norm, but what happens if you have two walls facing each other? Um, so it stays the same, the rule is the same, because the customer is in charge of protecting his, his falling area, so you cannot sit in the area, and obviously you cannot climb on both sides if you have walls facing each other. So here you have at least the 250, here it's something like three meters. And when we design a gym, we on purpose design spaces where it's closed because it's um, the position where you touch elbows and talk to your gym crush, um, get to know each other, um, but it should only be a small percentage of the whole gym. As we talked about before, the regulation comes after the development. What has been developed since the D-norm for sure is huge holes and huge volumes. So what we are doing at Blockhelden, we are really adding to it um, because the holes are basically not existing in the norm. Um, but what has been developed that we do very simple shapes and big flat surfaces. And obviously, if you put here a one and a half meter volume, which we have in our production and we use a lot, which is super nice because you can change the whole wall. Um, where's your protect protection now from the D norm? It's still here but just from common sense, it might be here. 
So when you design a wall, you should really think about the most uh, extended volume you add to the wall and, and then think about your 250. So where it is now. So I would not, not uh, save space on, on the mattress area. So this is an example where you really have to think for the D-norm because the D-norm was written in the past. In the past we had holes like this and this was a big hole and we basically had only really tiny volumes. Nowadays we luckily have huge volumes which are super fun to use. But in my opinion the projector is now here so at your maximum volume. It's not here at the wall, it's not written in the D-norm, but in common sense it should be here. So think about your wall design and your biggest volume you have and then make your projection of your falling distance. Now you probably question yourself, um, I know the distance, but what is it? So it's really not defined in the norm what the mattress is. Um, it's said to be some kind of, of mattress, but it's not how thick it is or the quality, the suspension it has. But this is really your common sense, your engineering and also the quality of your product because obviously it's much nicer to be safe falling, to try hard boulder, fall on your side and it's okay and not have a super hard surface to fall on. Um, so I would always go with a 30 centimeters or even a 40 centimeter mattress and really look that it's soft from the beginning because maybe you are a strong climber, you don't feel it so much but if you're a beginner and you need people coming to the sport, they will feel the difference and they're scared basically from, from dropping. And, and it kills the whole fun of bouldering. Again, the norm is not a design briefing. People often read it as a design briefing. It's not. You have to think about your customer. And what I just want to show you, this is a four, four, four and a half meter wall. And you just um, save yourself half a meter. It's a lot of surface. At the end, it's a lot of cost on your side that you can save. And from our perspective, it's really not, not a good idea to, to do your first grades, maybe one, two, three, four. Um, to 450 because that's not good for, for a beginner. You, you don't have the, the muscles, the, the strategy to jump, you, the timing is wrong. Um, so you, anyways, I would not suggest you to, to root set to the top. Um, so you, you have to really be intentional where you need the whole height and, and, and think about your design briefing and, and your investment. The norm is a theoretical paper um, which helps you to design safe, safely. But um, in the practical world, you often will have walls that have columns in existing buildings when you rent a space um, and it will be in your falling distance. So is it possible to use it? For sure. You see it all over. Um, the solution here is to, to make a mattress cover around it and also protect it. So you have a lot of uh, details which are not defined in the norm. This is all on you to design it nicely and make it safe so that nothing happens. So regulations can always be intimidating, but the denorm for boarding walls is really short and precise, so it really helps. We've done walls now for 12 years, and it's really a helping hand. Um, and just remember, don't to max it out. It's not a design briefing. You can be smaller, 420, 4 meters, and it's a very good product. Um, also, the falling distance, we really advise to do more because you will have a lot of volumes, and, and you need areas where people can sit and relax. And this is just our latest project. Um, and here you can also see it's, it's a lot of space um, to walk around and, and we don't compromise on this safety. Hi, and by the way, my name is Lukas. I'm making these videos and you have any questions, feel free to reach out and profit from our 10 plus years of bouldering experience.